Which side of the lens is the outgoing light on, right or left? The right. Yeah, here's the outgoing light. It's clearly on the right side of the lens. Of course, uh, as we talked about last time, does the light go into your eye or out of your eye? Light goes into your eye. Yeah, unless you're Superman with heat beams coming out of your eyes, the light goes into your eye. So it's always good to put these arrows in so you can see where the incoming and the outgoing light rays are. The light goes into your eye, so the right hand quick side here is the outgoing light. And where's the image? On the left or the right? The whole point is to put the image on the retina. All right, so the whole point, when we said that the image is supposed to be focused on the retina, well, since the retina is on the side of the outgoing light, so the eye always produces a real image. The eye also always produces a real image. Because if it was a virtual image, the image would be over here, and the retina is not out here, right? Unless you've got really bad trouble with your eye. Okay, so the retina is inside of the eye over here, so eyes always produce real images. Okay. All right, you can see why that is. Um, because uh, you never, the, the focal length of the eye is so small that the object never gets inside the focal length, at least not at a point where you can focus on it, right? right? Um, so uh, since the eye is a very small lens, the focal length is pretty close, so we're always here with the real images. Okay, um, and that's how you drew it here, a real image. Okay, so what does that tell us about the sign here? It's positive. All right, so unfortunately the people who didn't even think about the sign would still get this problem right, even though they didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, but in some cases it could have been negative, so it's important to watch out for that. Okay. So you're getting a common denominator, good. So we can change 1 over 2.5 to 10 over 25 to give us a common denominator. Okay, so the focal length is going to be 2.3 centimeters. I think that was the question, right? Yep. Ah, all right, well, we got to it. All right, well, we can do this. Okay. So, uh, and did mathematically, did that come out positive or negative? Positive. Is that what we expected? Yes. Because it's a converging device. We already knew that. If it had come out negative, we would have to check for an algebra mistake because we know the eye is always a converging device. What, uh, what region uh, are we at here uh, in, the, in the table then, in the chart? Yeah. On the converging side. Now, careful, where did we put the object here? So the object is... Remember, we put the object at 25 centimeters. Right. And oh, our focal okay. point is 2.3 centimeters. So we are past um, the twice the focal point. Yeah, twice the focal point would be like 4.6 centimeters, so we're way out over here. And again, this is pretty much where you always are, Yeah. right? Because remember that even the normal near point is only 25 centimeters. The normal near point is only 20, 25 centimeters, which is way outside twice the focal point. So the eye only operates in this region of the chart. The eye always operates in this region of the chart. So the object is always going to be way more than twice the focal length. So do we get a real or a virtual image? Real. Which we already had figured out, but now we have confirmed that. Mm -hmm. uh, and is the image going to be uh, magnified or shrunk? Yeah. Right. Now that's common sense, right? Because for example, um, I don't know when, uh, let's see, I, I'm uh, looking at you, right? You're between five and six feet tall, right? But my retina isn't between five or six feet right. tall. So obviously the image has to be shrunk way, way down to fit on my retina over here. So it's just common sense. 
Uh, so it's just common sense again that you can't, the eye would not work over here. There wouldn't be space inside the eye for a magnified image. Everything that we look at is bigger than that retina in our eye. So we have to be shrinking things over here. And here's something, you might have heard this in bio class. The image in your eye is inverted. Mm -hmm. And then your brain inverts it again. All right. So actually, every, the, the, the image here, um, if someone actually just put, um, I don't know, a mirror here and looked at the light, the light would be upside down from when it came in. But your brain is so smart, it corrects for that without us even having to worry about that. So that's a, a fun fact about vision. OK. Uh, so that gives us this. So this was a case where we didn't go to the chart. We just went to here first. But now we know that the eye is always in this region over here. That's important because how is that important? So when you're working with the eye, do you use positive or negative focal lengths? And do you use positive or negative image distances? Positive. Because they're always real images. OK, so that's important to think about the signs there. So unfortunately, even the, even the, the sluggers that don't even think about the signs would get that right by accident. OK. All right, that was good. All right, so um, we, had, we had a little trouble getting started here. But once we got through that, you were doing the right thing, which is you were matching the numbers up with these variables. You were saying, aha, this number is the 25 centimeters, and this number is the 2.5 centimeters. We've got to match the numbers we're given up with these three variables, and then we can just plug and chug and get to our answer. Uh, and now we actually have to draw the shape of the eye, but there's this inside diameter over here. OK? Any questions?